Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, let's dive into one of the real world scenario that many businesses face analyzing the employee overtime data. Whether you are an HR professional, a data analyst or just curious about data visualization, this video will guide you through the process of creating insightful analysis of overtime work patterns. We'll be working with a data set that simulates the number of days the employees have worked overtime and the distribution of employees based on these overtime days. Specifically, let's visualize the number of overtime working days on the X axis and on the Y axis, we will have the number of employees who have worked overtime. This analysis is crucial for understanding the workload distribution, identifying the potential burnout risks and making informed decisions about workforce management. So let me show you the data set that I have here. On my Excel sheet, I have the employee ID. I have the date column here. The duration of this data here is one month. And then I have my start time, end time and the number of hours worked by that particular employee on that particular day. So with this data set, what is it that we're trying to achieve? Let's take a look at that a little bit more in detail. On the X axis here, I would like to display the number of overtime working days in a month, for example, one day, two day, three day, four day, etc. And on the Y axis here, I would like to know how many employees of mine have worked one day overtime in a month. Let's say, for example, I have 50 employees here. And then I would like to know how many such employees here have worked two days overtime in a month and how many of them, let's say I might have 10 days overtime in a month and I would like to know who those employees are who have worked about 10 days of overtime in a month. So this is what we will be analyzing today and it is not very straightforward. This is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to show you step by step how to achieve this. So let's get started with this tutorial. I've imported the data here in Power BI and I have the same columns here, employee ID, date, start time, end time and hours work. And now I would like to have a flag here which basically will tell me whether that particular employee has worked overtime or not for that particular day. So let's quickly add a calculated column here. I'm going to click on new column. I'm going to call this as overtime flag. I'm going to use an if statement here and say if my hours work is greater than 10, then it is considered as overtime. In your organization, if this number is different, you can change accordingly. And then I'm going to say if the number here is greater than 10, then return one else return a zero. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. And now I have an overtime flag. This will basically return either one or zero based on the employee has done overtime or not for that particular day. And then let's go back to the report view on our X axis. We need to add the number of overtime working days, one, two, three, four, five, etc. And I don't have that in my data set. So we need to create a new table, which will be disconnected table. So let us see how we can do that. So I'm going to go to the modeling tab and then click on new table. I'm going to call this as X axis overtime is equals to I'm going to use the generate series function here and define my start value and end value. I'm going to give it as one and my end value here for now, I'm just going to give it as 30 followed by a comma and the incremental value here is going to be one. You can also make this dynamic here if you would like to, but for now I'm going to leave it at that and then click on confirm. Now I have my X axis overtime table created. I can bring this column here into a visual and I'm going to change this into a clustered column chart. I now have the value here, which is basically getting summed. And instead of getting summed, I want to move this here onto my X axis. And if I just bring in the X axis over here, I have the values now being displayed. Let's quickly go to the format tab under X axis. I'm going to change this here to categorical so that I have all of my values being displayed here. Let's close this and let's get rid of the sum of value here. Now let's start by adding in some more measures into our data model. I'm going to click on new measure here. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call this as overtime employees. I'm going to use the calculate function and within that I will be using the distinct count function to count the number of employee IDs who have worked overtime. So I'm going to use the employee ID field here, close the bracket comma and then let's pass in a filter. Filter is here is going to be our overtime flag. Let me quickly move this on to the next line. Overtime flag is equals to one. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. And now I have the list of or the number of employees who have worked overtime. If I bring this into a card, I now have the number of employees 
who have worked overtime in the entire month, which is 185. Now that we have identified the unique number of employees who have worked overtime, it is now time for us to identify how many times have these employees worked over time. Let's quickly add in a measure to do that. I'm going to call this measure as overtime days is equals to, let's use the calculate function. And this time I'm going to use the count rows function to count the rows that are in my overtime table and then close the bracket here followed by a comma. And I will also have to pass in a filter here for the overtime flag. I'm going to pass in the filter here for the overtime flag and say is equals to one, close the bracket and confirm. And now if I bring this into a new card, the overtime days, I can see that I have 486 days, which means that there are 185 employees in total have worked 486 overtime days. Now let us add our final measure to identify which employee has worked how many times of over days. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to add a new measure. Let's call this as number of employees. I'm going to use the calculate function and within that let's use the distinct count function to pass in the employee ID field here, close the bracket followed by a comma and then I'm going to use the filter function. Let me bring this onto the next line here. I'm going to use the filter function. I will now summarize the uh, data that I have. So let's use the add columns function here before summarize. And within add columns, I'm now going to use the summarize function. The first argument here within the summarize function is to enter the table name. And the table here is our overtime table followed by a comma. Now I need to group by a column. The column here is going to be our employee ID. I'm going to close the bracket here and then followed by a comma. And, and now we are back into our add columns function. I'm going to open quotes here and then enter overtime count. I'm going to close the quotes here followed by a comma and then my overtime days. I'm going to pass in the measure that we have created called overtime days. I'm going to pass in that and then I'm going to close the bracket here followed by the comma and then type in overtime count. This is the column that we have added here and then say is equals to if my overtime count is equals to max of let me bring this onto the next line so that you can see this better and overtime count is equals to max of my x axis overtime value. I'm going to close the bracket here close the bracket again, close the bracket again, close the bracket again to close the calculate function and click on confirm. And now we have our last measure created. Let's go to our visual where we added the value onto our X axis. And now it's time for us to in the number of employees measure into our Y axis. And now you can see that we've started to display the number of employees who have worked over time. Let's quickly add the labels here. And then let me get rid of the cards that I added. I've quickly made some formatting changes and now we can see that we have 65 employees who have worked one day over time in the entire month. Likewise, I have 10 employees who have worked five days over time in a particular month. So this is how you'll be able to analyze the employees who are working over time. So that's it guys in today's tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more tutorials on data analysis and visualization. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so that you never miss an update.